Welcome to Crumbs 13. Yes, today we are going to speak about the Holy Spirit. Um, we have both been studying this for some time, and I have often come to this overwhelming, not in a bad way, but this overwhelming experience like um, and responsibility of how is it that we can even touch um, the depth, the height, the width of the Spirit of God and the power of. And um, so when we were in prayer right before this, you know, it was just really so evident that this truly will be a crumb. Yeah. And that although our words are not going to cover how expansive the Holy Spirit is and how he operates, that the Lord would bring increase to you um, in a way only he can, in a way that he needs to specific to you. Um, because this is such an important topic because the Holy Spirit is one of our greatest weapons and assets in this Christian walk. Mm -hmm. Yet um, so often, knowing or unknowingly, our churches and our teachers and the body of Christ in general are dampening. They're restricting. They're putting God in a box. They're um, confused about what is of the Holy Spirit and what is of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And and they're afraid. Mm -hmm. I would say that they're afraid. I've had conversations with women that are involved in the occult and had an opportunity to pray with them. And when I have these conversations, oftentimes what these women who are wrapped up in occult practice that are doing things that are um, associated with uh, demonia, they oftentimes are so turned off by church because the church comes at them with fear mm. instead of just truth with love. And so as we approach this topic... Um, I just want to come against any spirit of fear that would keep you from the fullness of understanding of how God wants to move and operate in your life. Um, I was reminded why she was just speaking that I heard someone say this and it really resonated. And it was that there is no Christian life without the Holy Spirit. Wow. Yeah. There is no Christian life without the Holy Spirit. And there is no true peace without the Holy Spirit. Amen. And and so, therefore, um, the evidence of the Holy Spirit within you is the peace that radiates through you. And um, we're just going to yeah. dive in. And I'm sure, um, I think we both have studied this very differently, so it's going to be fun. It's true. <laughs> so I'd love to start with just talking about what we kind of briefly talked about before we started recording. And that is, um, the first thing that I wanted to do was understand those two words, holy and spirit, because they are two separate words in scripture. Um, and that word spirit actually by itself holds um, a lot of weight to it because the way the Bible uses that word spirit is as a disposition or influence, which fills and governs the soul of anyone. So mm -hmm. that is a pretty broad spectrum because there are many types of spirits um, in terms of like different types of demon demonic spirits, but there is only one Holy Spirit. Amen. And so that word holy um, is so critical because it's sacred. It's perfectly righteous. It's pure. Um, it's the only the only way you can describe it is only could be from God. And then that word spirit, if you look at the the Greek, it's a wind. It's a breath. And interestingly enough. Belinda sent me this video and I just was like so overwhelmed by it. So I sent it to our friend and then she was like, oh, Belinda sent it to me too. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love this. So mm -hmm. Yahweh, one of the first ways that um, God revealed his name to Moses, Yahweh, um, we say Yahweh because we like vowels. So we add the vowels A and E. But really the way it was in scripture was Y-H-W-H. -H. And um, it's like a breath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And inhale, inhale. Yeah. Exhale. And I, it's, it's this, it's the breath. And that is what the, the spirit is, is the breath. And so the Holy spirit is like the breath of God, the most pure, righteous, holy. And, and yet the Holy spirit is a person separate mm -hmm. from God, but comes from like the breath of God. So when God created Adam and Eve, he blew his breath into them which then became his spirit <coughs> became the life within them and gave them breath when um, 
God changed Abraham and Sarah's name, he added the breath of God on them, which he took it and added the A-H. And he says the breath of God. So the spirit came and dwelled within them and on them. And you'll find this all throughout Old Testament and into New Testament. But New Testament, we, we get to experience the fullness of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit through Mm -hmm. um, the sacrifice of Christ and asking him to be Lord of our life and fill us. And that, I was going to have you jump into other notes, but that actually is a great transition because when I was studying this, the main thing that I kept coming up to was repentance. Mm -hmm. Because if we look in Acts 2 and we start in verse 38 through 47, it says in scripture that it starts with our repentance Mm -hmm. and repentance is true, sorrowful, you know, asking, humbling. It's asking for forgiveness from the father. It's wanting to flee from whatever Mm -hmm. you're asking for forgiveness from and that you have disdain for whatever it is that you're repenting from. Exactly. And and so it starts there. Yeah. And it's not a one time thing. I, um, you don't repent and then you're done. Um, because we are in a sinful world and have a sinful nature and, um, and that we have to bring into obedience into Christ's nature to be transformed into his image means seeking to be obedient and make your body submit to the spirit of God, which actually is not restricting at all. That is a lie of the enemy that it's restricting. It's actually the most freeing thing that could ever happen to anyone on this earth is when you realize by repenting, um, not only are you pleasing God, but you are surrendering yourself to him and being um, in a surrender of freedom, which allows the Holy Spirit to move in and through you and becomes this incredible um, revelation of his life and breath in you. And the lack of the repentance is truly what grieves the Holy Spirit. That lack of repentance, that covering up that we try to do in our own power. The only thing that can cover your sin is the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And repentance in the Greek is actually to change one's mind heartily, to amend um, and to abhor something, to abhor your past sin. And so it's it's a powerful thing, Mm -hmm. repentance. Where else did God lead you? So how, how do we know the Holy Spirit? Like, <clears throat> what are the gifts of the Holy Spirit? What is the fruit of the Holy Spirit? And what is the voice of the Holy Spirit? And so um, we will only be able to, like, kiss this. Mm-hmm. But let me just express the evidence of the gifts and the evidence of the fruit And the evidence of those two things will manifest his voice within you and bring about his voice. And matter of fact, I truly believe the voice of the Father pursues the sinner hardcore. So whether or not you have asked the Lord into you, he is pursuing you and speaking to you and creating avenues to him to be so he can reveal his love and truth over you. So how does the Lord speak? I, I, how do you know the Holy Spirit's voice? And those are questions to ask yourself. But scripture is key. Scripture is the first voice of the Holy Spirit. It is never changing, always consistent. And it is a perfect roadmap and, um, to life in a surrender way. But scripture is literally just words on a page and it becomes just knowledge, not wisdom, without the Holy Spirit, which is why we started with repentance. Right, right. And asking the Holy Spirit to come in and give you eyes. Oftentimes you've heard us say, Father, unscale our eyes, give us eyes to see. That is what we mean. Like we want to see what he is speaking. We don't want to be um, limited by what we see with our physical eyes. We want to see in the spirit realm and be moved by him in the physical realm, not only physically, but spiritually. Mm -hmm. Amen. So then there's other ways, like he'll speak in visions and dreams. You'll hear about scripture re saying a still small voice. And I happen to love the still small voice. Mm -hmm. Um, The father is super gentle. Mm -hmm. Um, and incredibly patient. And matter of fact, I often have shared with 
um, other women going through different circumstances, the father is not a keeper of time. He is a giver of it. So there isn't any rush in time because in him, he is patient and perfect and waiting for you just to surrender and experience the gift of time in him. Um, he will experience, uh, he will speak through mental images. He will speak through songs and worship. He will speak in a knowing. There are just things, believer or not, you know it is right or wrong. It is a mm-hmm. knowing. Mm-hmm. You know. You know without a doubt this is not right. Because you encounter the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And then he speaks in manifestations. Mm-hmm. And... um that becomes an awareness like your body becomes alert and awake to his presence it's almost as an affirmation to what you're speaking is true and all of a sudden um you are aware that your body the um they say goosebumps but it is really the presence of the awakening of your body coming into um, submission to the holy spirit and the voice of the spirit of the lord within you And sometimes there's not a feeling. Amen. Because God says that he will never leave us and he will never forsake us. And we also just want to be aware of not being attached to the feeling because then we start to think that God has abandoned us when we don't have the feeling. Um, There are often times when I really want the feeling. I'm just going to be honest. Like I might have a hard day and I wake up in the morning and I want the feeling. I need the feeling. And those oftentimes are are the moments when the Lord pushes me in such a way to seek his face without experiencing the feeling. Amen. So I just want to encourage you in that. We're not, con- Lynn and I are not constantly feeling like the arms of Christ around mm-hmm. us. We're not constantly feeling the goosebumps and the warm mm-hmm. fuzzies. Like we have times of struggle where it does feel in our flesh like God is so far away but those are opportunities to remember the promises and the truth of his word and to have it written in your heart so that way you can expel the lie that the enemy wants to say to you like that he's not near you that he's forgotten you or that the promises that he spoke weren't true those are all lies from the enemy and we can't allow our feelings to dictate what is true and what is a lie amen it is a hundred percent true because your feelings will lie to you Mm -hmm. They really will. So then there is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And um, I loved it because in Scripture, if you go to um, 1 Corinthians 12, it says there are, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. <laughs> I love that. But the same Spirit. And that was verse 7. And, and then after it talks about all the different gifts, it says, but one and the same Spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills as the lord wills and so these gifts are um the increase of the father as he wills within you um and he doesn't limit and his timing is perfect and the manifestation of them is perfect and i think sometimes there are things that you are moving in that is actually a gifting and you don't even realize that it's the gifting of the father but Mm -hmm. so words of wisdom words of knowledge faith um gifts of healing working of miracles prophecy discerning of spirits different kinds of tongues and then the interpretation of tongues are what scripture talks about the gifts um, of the spirit so diversity means that they're all different and each one of us are going to move differently in them And not everyone's going to be able to, not everyone has the same gifting. Um, I just want to say, like, there are conversations happening in our churches about, like, the lesser of the gifts based on what scripture says. And, like, what is is from the Lord and what is not. And I think that there's a lot of, like, um, cross-contamination when it comes to, like, religious ideology and what Mm -hmm. people, different religions and denominations believe and... Um, I think this is where the fear-based thinking comes in and where people limit God. I want to encourage you in repentance if you have um, made assumptions about the gifts um, in a way that has minimized the power of God in someone's life. Mm -hmm. 
we we definitely realize that there is sensationalism that goes on yeah. in the body. Um, that being said, uh, to forfeit something that could be a gift to you from the father because you don't understand it or to um, defame somebody else because they have a gift that you don't understand. Um, I would just caution you in that because there are those that are operating in gifts that you may not understand. And because of fear or because of jealousy or who knows what. Or just discomfort because it's a spirit realm and not a physical realm. Right, right. I mean, that's the thing. The Lord moves in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. He manifests in the physical realm. Definitely take pause. Mm -hmm. Take pa We're doing that constantly. All the time. Take pause. Go to the Lord. Is this from you? Ask him to, to unscale your eyes and your ears mm -hmm. and to show you what is true and what is real and command the enemy to flee from you so that way the enemy cannot speak a lie in your ear about mm -hmm. what is true and what is not. Um, I think that if we all took time to do that, there would be a lot less pointing of the finger, a lot less judgment, and the body of Christ would be more unified. Mm -hmm. I think that um, I wanted to just... Um, so in... In calling out one of your spiritual gifts, and she didn't know I was going to actually do this, but I feel very compelled to, is that Katrina has been gifted um, with the discerning of spirits. Now, that gifting came through entertaining that which she shouldn't have been in the New Age. And and so she, un she experienced things that she entertained that allowed... Um, <clears throat> spiritual bondages that were not of the Lord, but very real. And um, through all of that and through repentance and through encountering God and asking the Holy Spirit to come and be Lord of your life, um, he has turned that into a good. Mm -hmm. Romans, Romans 8, 28. 28. We were just talking about that. He's turned that into good and he's using it in the gifting of her to discern, to discern the spirits in which... Um, are before her like when the father puts her in front of someone and um who has demonic oppression or um possession she, god has gifted her in discerning uh, uh those spirits and and um and i will say honestly through this relationship um he has been teaching me and and quickening um um, eyesight and giving me new discernment in that area so it's very really neat and that's why we um, that is why there's fruitfulness in coming together with other believers because um, you're not going to have all the gifts yeah I sometimes I'm a hand and she's a foot <laughs> and I don't want to just walk on my hands all day so <laughs> leave it to her. I need a foot <laughs> So how do you know the evidence of the Holy Spirit resides within you? So we're not talking about someone else. You're not to be looking at another and sizing them up. This is really about you being true um, to the Father and your relationship with Him and the manifestation of the Spirit within you. The fruit of the Holy Spirit, it's, it's one fruit. We've talked about this before. It's mm -hmm. one fruit. It doesn't say fruits. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is love joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Galatians 5.22. And that is, that compromises the fruit, like Belinda said, the one fruit. He's all of those things in one. Yes. When you move this way, when you move in love, when you move in joy, when you move in peace, like resting instead of being anxious and worried about the next thing or did I do this right? Did I did not do that right? Oh my goodness. So like, um, or when you move in long suffering, like being willing just Ugh. to lay yourself down mm -hmm. over and over and over again, um, you manifest kindness, you give out goodness mm -hmm. and his faithfulness will radiate through you without you even knowing it being self-control means not having your first response being angry it's not your first response isn't repointing the finger mm -hmm. your first response is not fleshly amen which takes pause again taking pause yes 
I want to read Acts 1 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the up, uttermost part of the earth. But you shall receive power. That word power um, is force. It's power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. Now, when we were born, we were born with sin nature. That is why we need the blood of Jesus Christ. That is why we need repentance. Um, because by virtue of our nature, do we receive the Holy Spirit? So we're not born and then given the Holy Spirit right away. It's repentance. Mm -hmm. It's co being covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's true belief in receiving that kind of power. Because this kind of power is nothing like the kind of power that you could ever encounter or experience that is of your own accord. Amen. But upbraiding will happen when there's no repentance, which means that's Matthew eleven twenty. 20 upbraiding is revile, like a reviling, like the Holy ghost will revile you if there is no repentance. Mm -hmm. And so when you see people that are not repentant, that are living in sin and they are, um, and they are making excuses for living in their sin, but you see power, that is a sign that that is not power from the Holy ghost because the Holy ghost reviles mm -hmm. One that is not repentant. Mm -hmm. mm. The Holy Ghost is your helper and also the spirit of truth, mm -hmm. always there to lead you in the way in which you should go. Mm -hmm. He dwells within you and will surround you. He is the promise. He is the manifestation of the promise of God. Mm. He is the promised land in which you take in the Father when you make a covenant with him and receive the fullness of him. And he is the power that you need to count on to walk out Amen. each day in covenant relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So don't grieve the Holy Spirit with what comes out of your mouth. Don't grieve him with your actions or what you watch or what you watch or what you listen to um or how you spend your nights or what all, you do in secret all the things i'm telling you we are seeing end time prophecy happen right before our eyes mm -hmm. right now as we're recording this israel is under attack and we are watching bible prophecy unfold mm -hmm. we won't go into all the details of that because we're 22 minutes in now but you need to understand that now is the time for repentance and now is the time to give your life to Christ. And now is the time to walk in the true power, the true authority of our God, the creator of the universe. So that way you can be a light shining upon the hill because you have him residing within you and you can fulfill what God put you here to fulfill the purpose for your life. Amen. And that is to bring people into knowledge of who our savior is mm -hmm. and help them to also walk in freedom. Mm -hmm. So this last scripture, John 14, 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Amen. When things are crazy, and this world really is, and right is now wrong, and wrong is now right, and um, it's important for us to stand up in the peace of God and speak to the truth of God. Yeah. And live it and radiate it. And not be afraid of the persecution of men, but worry about on judgment day when it's just you and your creator, mm -hmm. whether or not you were ashamed of the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because if you, if you are, or if you were, when your time comes, he says he will be ashamed of you in front of his father. So, mm -hmm. um, these are heavy things. So fun to talk about the Holy Spirit. We love the Holy Spirit. He is our best friend. Mm -hmm. um, so we love to talk about him. But man, what a responsibility and a beautiful gift all at the same time. Amen. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us today. Yes, we can't wait to meet you at his table. God bless you.